Hello there, I'm Koosh. I wanted to do something a little bit different today. I realized that on October 12th, there was a post from Bioware asking for feedback about the progression for gearing in the new R4 anomaly operation. And I thought, what better way to do this than to do this together? Hey, Operations players, now that you've had time to challenge the R4 anomaly, we wanted to gather feedback on how rewards and gear were distributed. If you need a refresher on the gearing system, check here. As a highlight from this post, the main goals of the R4 gearing system are progression as a group and progression on every kill. Let's start with progression as a group. Bosses in the R4 Anomaly drop two boss-specific tokens per defeat that can be exchanged for virulent gear, the highest item rating available from the operation. These tokens are tradable for a two-hour window to any member of the operation. This lets a group move rewards to a chosen player and ensures that early bosses remain desirable after multiple clears. Okay, I have a lot I want to talk about and rant about for the token drop system, but I'm going to wait and we're going to go one at a time and maybe what my question or what my rant is about will be a question. If not, then I'll complain about it at the end. So question one, do you feel your group was able to progress in power through the operation? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much. But I would say yes. I know there's always the, oh God, the gear doesn't make that much of a difference, which I don't know. I can see both sides. To me, you're getting better gear, so shit should die faster. Question two, do you think improvements could be made to make it easier to progress as a group? If so, what do these improvements look like? I don't think they're talking about actual boss prog. I think they're actually talking about progressing as a group in terms of gear. So I'm going to come from, because this is a gear post, I'm going to approach this from the standpoint as they're talking about gear progression. One of the things I wanted to complain about was I remember raiding back in like the Dread Fortress and Dread Palace days. Each boss dropped a specific token. So what R4 does right now is each, so say like boss one drops a token and there's like three pieces of gear you can choose from. Boss two, three pieces of gear, you know, so, so on and so forth. But what a lot of operations did back in the day was what they would do is like each boss dropped a specific piece. If I remember correctly, Dread Council at the time was the main hand. So if you wanted the main hand, you had to kill Dread Council. Where I think right now, Dominique is the main hand, which it makes sense you get the main hand from the final boss. Uh, but Dom also, I think, is it is it legs and boots as well? So essentially, you can get one of three pieces from Dominique. I preferred that system. I thought it was cool. You kill this boss, you get that piece, and then you can distribute the gear. But 6.0, I think, kind of spoiled us. Because back in the day, the way to get gear... Kill this boss, get this piece. A little piece of the cake. What 6.0 did, they gave you the entire fucking cake. You just kill shit, you just get gear, boom. Easy peasy. So it's like, we used to have little pieces of cake, and then we got the whole cake, and then they take the whole cake away, we're back to little pieces. I think if they wouldn't have jumped from this to this to that, like, it wouldn't be as big of a deal. It really, at the end of the day, it's whatever. I do like this gearing system, but I think as, like, a overall criticism is... In the last expansion, we weren't restricted like that. So, I don't know. That's my thing on that. But was it easy to progress as a group? Off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. I know in terms of, like, actual difficulty from that kind of prog, I heard a lot of complaints about IP on how difficult it is. My biggest complaint with the raid is the trash in the hallway for getting to Kanoth. That is just abysmal. I keep skirting around this question. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of thinking while I'm talking, but I, I really can't think of any improvements off the top of my head. I really enjoy this system where you kill this boss, you get this gear piece. So our next section, to target progression on every kill, each boss drops a general R4 token that can be used to purchase and upgrade hazardous gear. The secondary gear set lets you make smaller power improvements while working to complete your set of Verlin gear. Did you want to upgrade your hazardous gear? I would say yes. On my raid team, and from a lot of the other raid teams I have talked to or I watched on streams, it seemed like everybody had the same plan in terms of gearing. Gear the DPS, and then healers, and then tanks. So I was one of the last people to be geared on my team, so these blue tokens I was getting every time we cleared, I could use that to get gear. I obviously pugged a lot. I want to say 90% of my gear came from pugs. And then finally, when our DPS were all geared, I was able to get the purple main hand. 
What I did is I used my blue tokens to just get all the main hands on like on my tanks and then my DPS because I knew I would be waiting a while to get that and pugs at the time weren't like always clearing Dominique. So I would say yes, I did want to upgrade my hazardous gear. How quickly were you able to upgrade your hazardous gear? For me, I would definitely say pretty quick. My team would try to do two clears a night, so that's eight blue tokens, and not counting all the pugs I would do. The only thing that was kind of awkward is it was five tokens to upgrade a piece. I think it should have been four, just because there's four bosses, so... It felt awkward where I clear the raid, I have four tokens, and then I just have to kill one more boss randomly. I feel like you should be able to upgrade a blue piece once per run. Was Hazardous Gear helpful in completing the R4 anomaly? I would say yes and no. Like kind of going back to the first question, does one gear piece really matter? I think yeah, I think it helps. For me specifically, talking from a tank player, it was really nice to be able to get 340 main hands. Next section. The R4 Anomaly came with 12 new sets of vanity armor, purchasable with story and veteran R4 tokens. Story tokens can be used to purchase 4 sets of armor, and veteran tokens can be used to purchase 8 sets of armor. So the first question of this section, do you like the look of these armor sets? I'm going to say no. I like the headpiece, but that hood, mat, it, it, it's very meme -y. If you want a meme set... There you go. Did you attempt to clear the R4 anomaly to earn these armor sets? For the look or for like the aesthetic? No. I was attempting to clear for the gear because of the stats, not because of the look. Is there anything you'd like to see from future Operation Armors? I'd say, yeah, I really liked what they did with Duxon, where the gear that you would have on, it would give off like a color or shield on like your arms and your legs. Like that was kind of cool. More stuff like that. So our last section, the R4 Anomaly also came with a new mount, the Wings of Nairot. This mount has a small chance to be rewarded when defeating Lord Kanath. Do you like the look of this mount? I, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's unique. It's just... It's kind of awkward to me, or it looks awkward, that it has, like, the jet exhaustion coming out from the bottom of it. I feel like it'd be cool if it was just more floating. Like, obviously, maybe it's hard to animate the wings, but it'd be cool if you just, like, I guess floated. Did you attempt to clear the R4 anomaly to earn this mount? I would say no. Like, again, I'm not specifically clearing it for the mount. It's just, like, if the mount drops, cool. But I haven't just sat there and farmed Kanoth for the mount. If I have just sat there and farmed Kanoth, it's because I need the gear. Is there anything you would like to see from future Operation Mounts? I really like what they did with Duxin, where if you get Timer, everybody gets a mount. Like, Brontus, you kill Brontus, you get the mount. In some raids, there's like a small percent chance. So it's like, I wish it was just all on one, like it drops 100% or it has like a chance to drop. But I do like what they did with Duxin. Like I know Ruining Lives just got a timer the other day and they posted a pretty cool screenshot where it was everybody with their titles and they're all on their mounts. It's just kind of cool. Another thing I think uh, Cliff mentioned on his feedback post, the mount should be legacy bound, which I definitely support that because if you're running this boss multiple times, the drop chance of the mount is already very low. So there's also another just factor of what are the chances you're on the tune that you want the mount on. So like our thing was in Mr. Inc, my raid team, if the mount dropped, whoever was on their main gets it. Or if a couple of people were on their mains, then they would just roll. Cause like nobody else wanted to take it away from someone who is on their main because the percent chance is so small. Sorry, I'm ranting. What Cliff said is the mount should be legacy bound. So if it drops, you get it. You can just kind of send it to whatever tune you want on the gear. I know there's pros and cons to that, but for something that has such a small percent chance of dropping, I think it's fair that maybe in that specific case, it's legacy bound. This feedback will be valuable to us going forward as we develop future operations and review existing operations. Gotta run. Lady Dominique wants me to convince Lord Cannot to clean his room. Something about rot being everywhere. All right, I see what you did there. So I just realized here I am just answering all these questions ranting, but I didn't fill anything out. So I need to do this all in paper form or text form now. I thought it'd just be a fun video to kind of go through my thoughts on the gearing uh, progression for this raid. And I love you all. Thank you for watching.